So I'm Kristen Lutz. I work at the Community Foundation of Western Massachusetts. You're very proud hosts of Valley Gives, third year in a row. And um, I just want to start with a big thank you to Northampton Community Television. Dave, I understand, right? He's taking good care of us here in the front. It's very professional. I walked in, I was almost a little intimidated even. It looked like quite a setup here. So as you can tell, we're really trying to step it up this year in our technology game uh, so that if people miss the training, and you can please let friends know, or if you just love it so much today, I hope you will. You want to watch this over and over and over again. <laughs> we'll check your sanity first, and then we'll invite you to watch the beautiful recording that Dave is making here. Um, so my role at the Community Foundation is varied. I help donors um, with the funds and the charitable ambitions that they have to hopefully make Western Mass an even better place to live and work. Um, but I also uh, work with a lot of the Valley Gives program, although I just want to say quickly, really the two stars of Valley Gives this year will be giving you all the real information. I'm just here to welcome you, make sure you're comfortable. If everyone knows where the facilities are and you've got yourself situated, this is a beautiful facility. So the other thing I want to do is thank the Pioneer Valley Hospitality Group because they've so generously donated the use of the space today and it's amazing um, that we get to be here and gather so convenient hopefully location for everyone too so you didn't have to come all the way down to Springfield where we spend most of our time. And the Community Foundation is hosting Valley Gives but um, as for those who may not know we're in partnership with basically almost every other funder or foundation in the, in the area. The Beverage Family Foundation, uh, the Davis Foundation, the Jewish Endowment Federation and Foundation, um, the United Ways in all three counties, which I believe is the, Viola Gives was the first initiative that they worked together, all three on, um, which was wonderful, and one of my favorites, the Women's Fund of Western Massachusetts. So those are our other hosts. And the Giving Days movement is, uh, began really in Minnesota um, many years ago now, about seven years ago, I think. And they made it a state, statewide event. Um, but then after the success that happened in Minnesota, lots of other cities and regions uh, got the drift and thought this is really what we want to do to engage our community and build a really broad coalition and excitement around giving, uh, just like we have on kind of purchasing around the holidays time. We like to get excited here in the Valley about giving around the holidays time. So we're part of a national movement. Uh, the idea of building awareness for the nonprofit sector and using technology to do that is the idea behind uh, why many community foundations are actually hosts of their very own Give Days. And we were lucky enough to be a part of this national movement at a time when there was a lot to be uh, learned and a lot to look to other cities to figure out how we could do it best. So Michael will tell you a little bit about some of the other cities we modeled ourselves after. But from the Community Foundation standpoint, we just wanted you to know that you're grounded in something much larger than ourselves. If anyone's really interested in the movement of Give Days, you can look at the Knight Foundation, um, and they have been doing what they call a Giving Day Playbook, and actually studying from a funder's perspective, what is the impact of this kind of giving on philanthropy in local communities. And they've created a playbook that we've been making sure to follow, um, and tracking Give Days in cities across the country and having some peer learning. So that's part of uh, the movement that we're part of at the Community Foundation. And the impact model, if you think about, you know, let's say we all became Gates or Buffett tomorrow and personally had to decide how to give our money away. It's maybe a little harder than you think it might be. And you would want to make sure that the dollars you were investing had impact and had the ability to leverage and create a multiplier effect. So that's one of the beauties of Valley Gives Day is that it actually does this. So the model that we see as a funder, the reason we think this is great to invest in and encourage you all to participate in, is that it's building a broader engaged philanthropic community. It's hopefully making Western Massachusetts more generous. And we're working uh, with people who really understand measurement to try to measure that as much as we possibly can every year. And it's also strengthening your capacity as volunteers and staff of the nonprofits that make this whole valley more wonderful um, and we understand that it's really up to you to tell us what you need. And so we take that part of this program very seriously. Tracy will tell you a little bit about the feedback we got from you last year. That every year we've changed the program to try to respond to what it is that you want to make yourself stronger and be able to do more. And then finally, the center of all this is that we hope to raise a heck of a lot of money that will uh, support all of our good work. So we have some goals this year that are pretty specific. Uh, last year, some of you may remember, we had a goal. Does anyone remember what the big goal was last year? Just shout it out. You're alive back there. Two million. Two million, right? So we put that on billboards. We had it on the digital billboard on 91. And 
just about every other day I called Michael and Tracy and I said, I'm having a heart attack, my goals are up on a billboard. So if you think about your job day to day, if you had your goals on every billboard in Western Mass, how, how might that make you approach your goals differently? You may want to inspire yourself and put your goals all over your bathroom mirror like I did for three or four weeks. So it's just a point that Valley Gives does have goals and we're trying to change them every year depending on what we read as the signs from our community. So the signs we saw are that nonprofits really like this and are benefiting, so we just want more of you in the game. We want to have 400 nonprofits. We increased from a little over 260 the first year to 350 last year, and we'd like to increase to 400 nonprofits. We've left registration open, so if you know nonprofit friends that have not signed up, please encourage them to do it, and they'll have this awesome training recording to look at. Um, we thought about training and really thought about some of the skills that go into making you successful in your give day, and we um, are cutesy, so we went with four S's, solicitation, storytelling, social media, and stewardship as uh, areas where you might want to beef up your skills or your nonprofit capacity, and we really are leaving the choice to you this year. And this is the only training, really more of a workshop and a conversation, that you have to be together in the same room hearing the same thing. From here on out, you get to choose what content fits your needs, and Tracy will explain how that's going to work. So it's really our goal is to make sure that you improve in these four areas in some measurable way. Um, Michael will help us create an awesome traditional and non-traditional marketing campaign that everyone will notice, so the public comes to Valley Gives Day and contributes. And finally, thinking about the two million, it would be great to raise more than two million this year, but what would be really great is the idea that we keep pushing philanthropy out to a new wider audience year after year and reach more of the residents of the Pioneer Valley. So it was our goal to think about participation as a big public focus and we set a very lofty idea that maybe we could attract 20,000 people together to donate on Valley Gives Day this year. So we're not putting that on billboards because we don't want to have any heart attacks this year, but we are really encouraging you to be thinking about that number in your mind of 20,000. Hopefully that's an inspiring idea that together 400 nonprofits and turn around and convince 20,000 people to, you know, really engage in the joys of giving. And so that's the whole idea from a goals perspective. And that's the date. No more 12-12 because Friday bumps into um, not a great day for a give day. So we're kind of rolling it back to Wednesday now, 12-10-14. And Michael and Tracy will kind of give you all the real information. But I just want to thank you for coming for um, being willing to go on this great adventure with us. It's been a really a wonderful, exciting time to be a part of the nonprofit community in our valley. So thanks. So online giving. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so a few facts about they online giving. You are. Oh, sorry. <laughs> of course they do. <laughs> I'm Michael Cusick. Um, I'm the original program manager of Valley Gifts, so I've been doing this for three years, which makes me incredibly wise. I know it doesn't. Um, uh, I've been doing it for three years. I, I uh, uh, started working with Kristen um, at the foundation when Valley Gifts was just an idea that they had, and together we created a really, uh, we created the first year. Didn't know what the heck was going to happen. A lot of you who've been here since year one came along. And we all held hands and we sort of jumped into the breach together and we raised a million dollars, which was really amazing because everybody kept asking us, how much are you going to raise? And we were like, I don't know, you know, kind of, we'll raise some money. But then, then last year, I'm the one who said we have to put $2 million on the billboard, giving Kristen a heart attack in the process. But you guys did it. You raised $2 million in 24 hours, which is huge. And we're, 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 we're going to give you a little picture about where Valley Gives stands in relationship to other giving days around the country. Um, so you can see how awesome you really are. Um, so really the base of this, the basis of all of Valley Gives is online giving. And for those of you who were here last year, you probably remember these two big blue circles from our, our um, presentation last year. But um, online giving is still increasing. It's still tracking to increase. Um, last year was a good philanthropic year. Overall giving was up almost 5% last year, which was a jump because it had only was up 2% the, the year before. And that's all kinds of giving in the philanthropic world. Um, last year, giving online was up about 11%. This year, it's up 13.5%. So, so it's still continuing to increase. 
So by participating in Valley Gives and taking what you learn here and moving it forward so that you're doing online fundraising for your organization year round puts you in the game. The percent of total of giving that happens online is roughly about the same. Last year it was 7%, this year it's 6.4%. May have gone down slightly just because of the bigger increase in giving in general. But um, again, online giving, if you're not participating in online giving in a year-round fashion for your organization, you're leaving money on the table. You're not connect, you're, you, are, you are leaving out a donor group that wants to give to you that way. Um, so again, that's just to show you that what you're learning here and what you're implementing with Valley Gives, you should be really looking at year round. Um, this is a, a list of um, online giving by type of organization. So you've got a good list there of all the different kinds of, of various kinds of nonprofits. You can see that across the board, all of them um, their online fundraising has increased. Some more than others, um, but there are increases across the board. So find the nonprofits category and see where you stand in terms of these national numbers. This is from a great st uh, study from Blackbaud, which has a fundraising software. They do a big philanthropy study every year and we'll post this on the blog. So if you really want to nerd out about numbers and how much people are raising and where you sort of stand in relationship to the rest of the philanthropic world. It'll be on the blog, on the Valley Gives Day blog, uh, for you to download and have a read. Um, for those of you who are returning, um, for those of you who are maybe new or returning, uh, we did, you know, as Kristen said, we did look to giving days around the country um, and stole all of their really great ideas to help create Valley Gives here. And now people are stealing ideas from you guys. So uh, we've become we become a player in the national giving day world. Um, but the one that we really looked at was Seattle, which is the Seattle's Foundations Give Big. We really liked what they did within the city of Seattle, not only to engage nonprofits, but also to push out this message of um, promoting philanthropy and getting people in the community to engage in philanthropy. Their big, um, the Sonics, the soccer team, are like their big driver and they have like gigantic fundraising events with their, their, their filled soccer stadium. Proving Seattle is a really great place to live. I think it's very cool. Um, this gives you some indication as to how the Giving Day has progressed over the, year in, the years in Seattle. Um, with a big jump between years one and two, a sizable jump into year three, which is where we're at today. And then, um, you know, not as big a jump, but uh, a big jump in the number of participating nonprofits, but a little slightly just smaller jump in the amount of money they raised. They're still on an upward trajectory across the board for both participation and dollars raised. Um, so it shows that there's still growth possible. Um, this is a couple other different uh, giving days. Um, as Kristen mentioned, it started in Minnesota. That's Give MN. The, N, the M and the N are white and therefore are missing there. But that's Give Minnesota. That's the, 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 the grand, I called it the grandmother last time, so it's the grandfather this time, <laughs> this presentation, the grandfather of all Give Days. Um, that's a statewide giving day. You can see what their growth is like. They're also, they've been on the Razoo platform for their first few years. Um, Spring to Action Alexandria, Virginia. It's a city give day. Um, again, in the, they've just completed their fourth year, raising just over a million dollars. Um, and then the bottom one is, uh, is give uh, to Lincoln Day, Lincoln, Nebraska. So again, a city, a city giving day. Um, just finished, and they're roughly about where we're at. In year one, they did a little over a million. In year two, they did a little over two. So they're very similar in size to us, both in also in the fewer nonprofits, but about the same. Um, statewide, Nebraska's give bi uh, Big Give. You can sort of see where they stand. Um, they just finished their third year. Uh, live Give PC, which is Park City, Utah, much smaller. Um, just as a note, though, Nevada's uh, big give, that's the entire state of Nevada. 
And look at how much you guys raised last year, just the three counties in Western Massachusetts. So it proves the real impact the Valley gives here, given the total dollars that you guys raised together versus what the nonprofits in Nevada were able to do. We're with them. <laughs> and Valley gives. Uh, this is just shows you a little bit about our growth. Just uh, 6,600 donors the first year for us. Just shy of 1,200 donors the second year. Hopefully we're gonna get to 20,000 donors this year. Uh, just over a million the first year, just over two million the second year. We're making no big claims on dollars this year, but we're really looking to, for you guys, and we're looking to work with you guys to really drive that participation number, to bring in those donors into your organization so that we can together get to that 20,000 uh, donors number. Thank you. Hi again to everybody who was here last half hour. Uh, my name is Tracy Hightower, and I am the program manager for Valley Gives. This is my third year. First year I was a participant, just like you guys, uh, with the Amherst Education Foundation. Second year I was just taking care of y'alls. This year I'm taking care of y'alls and Kristen and no, <laughs> everybody else. No, yeah. So. Um, so yes, so the program has really, really grown. And some of the reasons it's grown to the size it has is because of you all. <laughs> so last January, we had a session to kind of debrief. And several of the nonprofits, I think like 75 or 80 of the nonprofits, came to our you know, debrief sessions and kind of shared with us what worked for them, what didn't work for them you know, what was the trajectory, what could we expect next year. So we listened to what you said and we made some adjustments this year. So those who are returning, you're gonna see a little tweak here and there and things that, you know, last year didn't work well or worked really well, we embellished on them. So, so anyway, so earlier registration, we started a registration in July this year because we had a few folks who really wanted to plan for their fall giving plan their winter, they wanted to know how they were gonna put Valley Gives into the big picture of how they were gonna raise money at the end of the fist or the end of the calendar year, so to speak, which is the biggest December is the biggest giving month by far of every month of the year. Twenty eight percent of the gifts given are given in December. So people wanted to know how to plan for that. Uh, easier registration. Okay, so here's the question. Was it easier to register this year or harder? Easier? Harder? Yay. Oh, harder. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. And we put a lot of materials up front so you could get prepared. So like when you sit down, you weren't going, oh, where's my Thank you. thing? <laughs> so good. Long, uh, longer registration period. So obviously you, none of you have to worry about that because you're here, but last year, I'm not kidding, 40% of our nonprofits registered in the last two days of registration. <laughs> so we gave you a lot of warning, we've publicized it, we've extended it, you know, you know, the, the unfortunate thing is those people who register later, they're gonna have to watch this video <laughs> as opposed to being with us, you know, here sharing our experiences. So um, more prize categories. One of the uh, areas we're gonna go over today is the prize pool. So we expanded our prize pool. We have more power hour dollars. We have um, three categories for nonprofits for donors. So like we took instead of having small and large nonprofit organizations, we now have small, medium, and large. That was by your request, rightfully so. Um, and then more training. So. Some people are like, oh, no more training. But there were people who really wanted more, especially after they went to the social media webinar last year with Heather Mansfield. It was very informative, and people were like, we would like more of that, please. So we've kind of expanded on that, um, and we looked into who was out there giving the best cutting-edge information on online giving uh, and soliciting money and stewardship and 
and uh, social media and storytelling. Those are the four areas we talked about, Kristen talked about earlier. So all of that we've accommodated you with. So key elements, we're gonna go over those too. So the key elements of a giving day, technology platform. So this is our third year with Rezu. They uh, are serving us well. They have really brought together some of the easiest plat like so the registration this year is a lot easier because they found a platform that worked for registration. Um, so Razoo is very successful. Uh, they have 90,000 fundraising websites. So we're going to be 400 of those 90,000, but that's how many that's how many nonprofit organizations are out there raising money on Razoo, raising 230 million dollars, and. They've done 60 successful giving days, and on average, raised $20 million, it looks like. <laughs> no. So $62 million on every uh, giving day. This is your Razzu team. They are that goofy. Uh, they're really nice people. I don't know if anybody's had a bad experience with them. I've only had really good ones with their customer service. So if you do have issues and you aren't getting the answers you need, or if you're frustrated, Definitely call me and we can help work it through, but they've been doing a fantastic job of helping people set up their pages, make sure that if you're a fiscally sponsored organization that you have the right documentation to make you legal, make them legal for giving you money. <laughs> they really are really terrific. So support at Rezu. Rezu is spelled wrong there, just it's zoo.com, not zzo, and their phone number. You're welcome to call them. They will really be helpful. So um, the nonprofit toolkit, this is not new to those people who have been here before. Um, the nonprofit toolkit is read it, <laughs> just read it, every single line of it. There are things there that you will find very, very helpful. There's a section on how to engage businesses to become your sponsors. You know, maybe they become one of your matching grants. You know, maybe they are out there you know, working for you and they can provide a location for the day of like an event. So if you have a local business that wants to work with you, take them up on it. There's a whole document on how to do that. That's just one of many resources inside of here. So this right here is specific to the platform that we're using, to Razoo. So in this area, there is a link called How To Videos. Have, is there anybody who has not seen this link? Okay, so this is really, really probably of all the things when you go to build your story, your solicitation, your uh, follow-up stewardship, all of that's gonna be done inside of Razu. When you get your donations, you get to send a thank you to your donor immediately. When you are creating the story to get people compelled to give to you, you can post that video, you can post that photo montage on Razoo. So I wholly encourage you to go to this site, which is the how-to videos, by clicking that step two. And it'll teach you how to create an awesome Razoo page. So one of the other videos on that page is how to create a matching grant for your nonprofit fundraiser. I'm going to go a little bit more in depth on matching grants later on, but go watch that video. It will help you realize what's possible from creating a matching grant on your website. Promote your fundru a fund a Rezu fundraiser page. This is where you can embed links to your Facebook page. So when uh, you put something, if someone makes a comment, say, on your Razoo page, because donors can do that, it'll link to your Facebook page, your Twitter account. There's all kinds of places where you can embed your social media on the Razoo page. Customize a thank you message. So last year we had some great thank you messages, just really sweet, compelling thank yous from people. So when your donor makes a donation, this video goes out and it, you know, is a sweet little boy saying thank you for providing, you know, pencils for my school or <laughs> any of those types of things. Really, really an awesome tool for stewardship. 
For NPO admins, check your donations and disbursements reports. Now, is, I was just speaking to somebody in here about, they asked me what do you do on the day of. I said, well, when I was a participant, I spent most of my day on this page. <laughs> so this is uh, going to show you how to link in to your um, donation spreadsheet. The spreadsheet shows you, actually it's a report and you can download a spreadsheet. It shows you the name of your donors, the email address, their phone numbers, their, <laughs> their every piece of information you need to put into your donor database when the day of is over. Um, I could see if I asked someone to make a donation, if they made it. Um, I could see if somebody was incredibly generous with us and thank them immediately, personally thank them immediately. That page will give you information on the day of, on every 20 minutes they update it. So you can look at it, look at it with your team, you know, call your fellow board members and say, hey, so-and-so just gave a $2,000 gift, you know, did you ask them to do that? Yes, okay, great, you should call them and personally thank them. You can do immediate thanks through this spreadsheet. Also, when you're done downloading your spreadsheet, uh, it's, since it's in Excel, it can import into most of your databases, so good to know. So that was our technology platform, Razoo, and some of the cool features on that. Our next area is the uh, competition and incentive grants. So, Community Foundation does a great job of raising money to give away to you guys. <laughs> and they do it because it drives more donors to your page. Donors love this as much as the nonprofits love it. They love knowing that that $10 they gave is gonna earn another $500, or that $100 they gave is gonna raise another $1,000. So competitive incentive grants are a big part of giving days. So this year, our prize pool is $225,000 and that's over 2,000 prizes. So that's a pretty huge amount of number of prizes. Uh, so we, we adjusted our prize pool based on what you told us, you know, going to the small, medium and large categories uh, and leaderboard prizes are focused on helping attract new donors. So we got to get to that 20,000. Some of our prizes are driven towards getting new donors who've never been to Valley Gives to your websites and to our website. <coughs> more prizes, more opportunities to win regardless of the amount. So we have lowered the amounts on some things but raised the amounts on some other things or added new, new categories. Our prizes and rules are at valleygivesday.org. <coughs> prizes and rules. So, um, so the Community Foundation raises this money through business sponsors, private donors, people who really, really want to support the actions of the Valley Gifts program. Um, all prizes that are donated through the Community Foundation will, so Razu collects your donations from your donors. We give you prizes. Community Foundation writes the check for the prizes. <laughs> and all your donations are written from Razu. Does that make sense? Okay, so Razu, is um, going to be, they promised that they would have your checks to you within 30 days of the giving day. And the Community Foundation promises the same thing, but they usually try to get them out before the end of the year. So you should be getting everything pretty quickly. So don't call me on December 11th and ask when your gift is coming. <laughs> it will be there very soon. <laughs> okay. Throughout the day on 12-10-14, Donors will be randomly chosen to get golden tickets. And we have these things called power hours. We started this last year because there were certain day, there were certain hours in the day where giving would just kind of go almost to a screeching halt. That doesn't create frenzy. That doesn't create, oh, I gotta give, I gotta give. There's 200 people giving now. Oh, there's 300 people. So what we did is we put these power hours in where we gave away incentive, small incentive grants to donors to come and give. And more than likely, when those donors came to give one gift, they probably gave two or three or four gifts. So it didn't just drive the bus for your organization, it drove the bus for many organizations at one time. So um, you can follow the results of this on the website and the blog. So the power hours get listed on our blog, whereas the 
golden tickets that happen once every hour. I'm going to talk about them. Those will be showing up on the Razoo uh, page. More than 100 different nonprofits will receive these prizes. No nonprofit may win more than one golden ticket, okay, in a power hour or by the hour. One in four nonprofits are going to win this year. If we get 400 people to sign up, one in 400 will actually get a, 5, 000, a 500 or a $1,000 prize. That alone is worth showing up for. So make sure, if you have any other organizations you're in love with, make sure they show up. Share the wealth. Make sure they register. So golden tickets plus more power hours. So we are giving away at 10 a.m. We'll, every hour from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., there's a $1,000 given away to one lucky donor. It's randomly chosen, so you could give it 7 in the morning and be chosen at 4 in the afternoon in the golden ticket hour and 4 in, or 4 in the afternoon. Does that make sense? I see a lot of nods, good. Um, at 10, we give away 20 $500 golden tickets. At 12, 20, at 4, 20, at 6, 20, and at 9 p.m., another lull kind of hour, we're giving away 12 $1,000 tickets. So when you're planning your campaign, and you're planning when am I gonna feed out a prompt to my donors that day? You want to look at these hours and figure out if you want to do it a little before then or how you're going to report when you do get one, that type of thing. Are any questions on that? Yeah. Matches? Yeah. yeah, I'm going to talk about matches next. So, okay. yep, yep. Any questions on that? Okay. Leaderboard prizes. So we, last year what we found was it was very difficult for smaller organizations to compete with larger organizations for the dollars amount raised. So we divided our categories up and we also changed it from unique donors and dollars raised because a lot of the people who had dollars raised also had the most unique donors. So they were getting a lot of money and it wasn't being spread out amongst all of the participants. So we came up with this because we also want to drive as many donors to the site as possible. A donor comes to your site to give to you, they give to three other organizations. That's what we're trying to drive here. So when we did this, we said, okay, let's go for unique donor prizes, let's spread the wealth, let's make sure all, and we don't, we don't know what the levels will be, so this is going to be driven by the operating budget of your organization. This is why we ask these numbers in registration. And it's going to be driven by the um, amount you bring in in donations in any given year. We're going to do an equation. So there are a lot of organizations that get governmental grants. And they don't do a lot of fundraising. And their operating budget is $5 million. So we're trying to find out what's the most competitive in each level to make sure that you guys get into the right level. I see a lot of blank stares. <laughs> Anybody have a question about that? How we're going to divide up? But we have a comment in the back. No? <laughs> no? Oh, she's stretching her legs. So, so yeah. Yeah, go ahead. And it's going to be two factors that you're calculating from. How are you going to let us know which category? Uh, I will let you know when registration closes because I won't know everybody's numbers until then. And so then we'll be able to say, oh, the folks that bring in $200,000 a year uh, in donations, but they have an operating budget of $300,000 or $250,000 a year, they're probably, the difference, the difference between what they raise and what they, and what they spend is very small. So they're going to put in the same category as organizations that have the same situation. Yeah. Any more questions on that? It'll become clearer when we get closer to November 14th, and we'll make sure to let you guys know, okay? The last one is first-timer, first-time nonprofits. There are some first-time nonprofits here in the room. That prize is a new prize because, of course, we wanted to encourage more nonprofits to come to the door. And the reason we wanted to do that, because they bring new donors to the door. So, five, you know, if 50 new nonprofits join and they bring another 100 each, donors that are going to give on that day or 200 or 300 that's another thousand donors that come to the site 
who may have never come there before and didn't know all of you guys were out there. So we did a special prize for them. Again, once registration is closed, we'll decide how we're going to give those three prizes away. It might be by uh, organizational size, the same, same as, as this. I know it sounds, seems a little vague, but it's really the best we can do right now until we get more. Since we opened registration a lot earlier, we don't know what our pool of people are going to be until we're really done. Yeah, Lisa. Um, there was a couple of reasons we did that. One was that we found that the same people were winning both categories, but also it's easier to make sure your big donor comes in at 10.30 at night and gives a large amount of money if you're a large organization to win the large money prize. So, yeah. Absolutely, right, absolutely. Yes. Yes, oh. yes. Yeah, actually, to be honest with you, the first timers have the best chance of winning the most money <laughs> on this day. Um, and the reason is, is they, they can be, they'll be categories with the small, medium, and large folks, but they'll also be in their own special category. These will be four leaderboards. So you guys saw before, you know, largest, large and small, most dollars, large and small donors. Well, now we have four that are small, medium, large, and first timers. We also took this from other giving days. So this isn't just us winging it. We looked at other strategies from other organizations to make a fair and level playing field, and this is one of the models that we chose. Okay, new donor bonus. Okay, who's confused by this? Uh, oh, Maggie's confused by everything, so. <laughs> All right, so the new donor bonus. So. We came up with this, again, to drive more people to the website. So uh, 1,922 lucky people are going to win money because they've never been to the website before to give to their organization. Okay? So say I've never been to the website and I give $25 and my name gets pulled out because it's the first donation that goes to that organization by a new donor that day. I get $25 added to it. But out of that group, we're going to pull two, and two of those are going to get $1,000. Because $25,000 or $2,500 is nice. $25 on top of your $10 gift is great, but $1,000 is a lot better. So in order to get more people to come to the site, we've given a small incentive and a really big incentive. Um, so it'll be the first 1,922 new donors that come to the site. How do we figure that out? Well, that's why we have a technology platform. They do it for us. <laughs> they know by your uh, donation whether you've come to the site or not ever. They have a database. My name is Sarah Smith, so I'm pretty busy with other people. So I just realized that they feel like how do you know that somebody is actually an individual person that's never been to the site? Before? They have a name like me. They have an email address. Email address. Their email address. A unique donor is identified by the email address that they log in to the Razu site. It's a very hard thing to game. So how many email addresses do you have? Seven? Eight? All right, well, you can log in under all eight and, and can be considered a new donor. But that's very tedious. So Razu, what they do is they identify. And it's dishonest. So. So, so the bottom line is that they see an email, they go, eh, in our database, no, okay, they're in the pool, eh, they're in the pool. That's how they do it. So they pull, they'll pull out the first 1922, and out of that 1922, they pull two more that are the big winners, randomly. The two donors will be, the two large donors will be pulled randomly out of the 1922 that are the first donors. That's Does that make sense? No, my question was about the 1922. 1922 are the first 1922 new donors. So that could all be done by? Nine o'clock in the morning. Hopefully. Yes, ma'am. Well, that's not new donors for particular, uh, 
Right, right. So, so basically, and we'll have more time for questions like this at the end, just so you know, but, but basically, they're gonna go, these are the first new donors we've never seen in this Valley Gives Day program ever, and you and you get $1,000, the rest of you get $25 added to your first gift. So say you gave six gifts. The first one you put in, that's gonna be the one that puts in the pool. First to Valley Gifts. Yep. Okay, meet your match bonus. So we're gonna talk about matches a little bit more. So you, somebody asked about matches, you did, yes, a little earlier. Uh, we're really, really encouraging you to start now to seek out the matching grant that will help your organization take a big leap, okay? So how this works, this is randomly selected throughout the day, just so you know. 25 nonprofits who meet a match, and a match is distinguished by what, what, what you set up on, forgot I was a match. <laughs> if you have a match, this is gonna be on your website. Okay, it's called a medallion. Um, when you go to this page, it's gonna teach you how to create a medallion. This is in the how-to section. Okay, the medallions, are um, an indicator of a matching grant on your site. So when someone searches your site and they see that, they know there's a matching grant there. Those grants are set up off-site, meaning they don't go through the Razu page. So John you know, Peters is giving $10,000 to you know, the Cancer Connection, right? If it's matched. So the Cancer Connection goes frantically <laughs> on a website and says, we're gonna get $10,000 if you give money now. Drive people to that site, and if they meet your match, they get another $10,000. The, the $10,000 that John Peters gave offline is going to be mailed separately, not going through the Resu site whatsoever. So um, it gives you very detailed instructions. How and why we want you to do these grants is because, one, we'd love to give you some more money. So if you reach a, a match of $2,500 or more, um, we will randomly pick 25 matches out of the giving day and add another $2,500 to it. So does that make sense? Yes? The match donor doesn't add to the number of new donors? No, that not that day. They can give. But that $10,000 on the side is not, it's, it's a separate check written, not inside the Razu system. It doesn't count to unique donors. It doesn't count to the donations of that day. Is, it is the money verified? So how it works is that when you set up a matching donor, and you'll see this in the how-to, is that you will put in an email address of the donor who made the match. And that donor, every time there's a donation made towards the match, because there's, there's a button on the checkout where you can say this is towards the match. Every time a donation is made toward the match, the donor gets an email. So they know if their match is getting met or not. So it's, and then, and then when it's fulfilled, they just write their check. Really, they write their check the next day. But, <laughs> yeah. It could be done either way. And you're more than welcome to have your donors put it through the site. On the day of, it would count towards your dollar total, but since our competitions, except for new donors, except for our competition, our competitions are unique donors, not dollars. So, and there is a 4.9% resu charges. So you're gonna save yourself 4.9% on whatever the, the match is if you don't send it through resu. Hey, if they want to do that, that's what you should encourage. Like, whatever the donor wants to do, you should do that. <laughs> yes, son? Um, it can be from an, this, okay, so just so you know, when a donation is made, no one sees who the donor is, 
Okay, so it's just that the email address is going to get a notification that money has been made towards their match. If they don't want the emails, then you can put your email address in. Have them set it up with your email address so you know that the match is being made. Yeah. Uh, all donations can. When I was talking about the donation report earlier, I meant to say that donations can be made anonymously. So your donors can give and not have all of their name, phone number, address, email sent to you. Uh, if they put it there, it means they want you to know it and they want you to contact them. Okay? So just remember that when you're looking at your donations report and going, oh, this personal information. They wouldn't put it there if they didn't want you to have it because they can click anonymous donation anytime they want. Okay, so matches work. And that's why we're encouraging them this year. That's why we're putting a lot of money towards our prizes in the matches. Last year, 150,000. Nine percent of what we raised last year, guys, came from match donations. That's amazing. The year before, it was only three percent. So somebody got smart and you know hiked it up 576 percent. So it's really, really, an, an, a very, very powerful. And we've seen other giving days where it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yes, they can. Exactly. So if a group, exactly, the board of directors match, the whatever, which is a really great way to do it. Get your board to put up a little money and make it a big pool and show the show the strength of the organization. Yeah, way in the back. Sorry. Uh, make four. Ma I think you can make more than one match. You can have more than one match on the site. They would indicate what they want. They would indicate what match they want to go to. Yeah. Uh, you know, but double check that with Rezu, how many you can set up and how it works. They they'll be able to tell you better than I would, to be honest with you. And you can also um, help us raise some corporate money. It sounds like you're awesome at it. We've got four already lined up. <laughs> so we can help. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. You. Yeah. Oh, okay. You have to set them up in order to be medallions. You have to set them up before the day. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I think it is before scheduled gift opens. It is. We can check on that deadline. Later, yeah. But I'm, I think it may be before scheduled gift opens on the Yeah. And I think that's when your medallion. I'll tell you what that is soon. Okay. Um, I'm going to move along. So here's one thing that you guys want to look at. This is a new thing um, that you can do this year. Uh, some people did it last year, actually. It just wasn't really well developed. Razu kind of has it down now. You, as, uh, uh, you can get one of your donors who's really enthusiastic about your nonprofit organization to go out and raise money for you. And they can do it by having their own fundraiser page that's linked to your page on Valley Gives Day. I think this is a great program. A lot of people have made successes uh, had successes with it, uh, creating a fundraiser page for runs and walks and all different types of things. So I would check this out. Uh, Ice Skating Club of Amherst did it last year. They had a bunch of skaters who went and raised like $200 each, and it all was attributed to their Valley Gives Day page. So, so before we go on, I'm going to talk about the schedule day. So new timers <laughs> and people who have been here but don't remember this, you can actually not, you can give a gift before Valley Gives Day, December 10. You can give it as early as December 1st. So December 1st, got it? December 1st. The reason I'm saying that is because last year people started pumping out their Razoo page to their donors in November, early November to make donations for Valley Gives. It will not count. Your Rezu page can take a donation any single day, but those don't count towards Valley Gives until December 1st. So scheduling a gift also requires that your donors' uh, credit card information is held until December 10th. So they're scheduling a gift 
So their credit card information is held. That's a very important thing to know because a lot of people don't want to do that. But if you feel safe and secure with Rezu, I do. I scheduled a couple of gifts before Valley Gives Day. They're going to hold your information. They're not going to see it, <laughs> but they're going to hold it. And on the 10th, they all, at midnight, they all start coming through. So you can, does anybody not understand that? So if you have any donors who come to you and say, hey, they want me to schedule a gift and they want to hold my credit card information, you have the answer for them now, which is, yeah, on the 12th, it'll process. Okay. The 10th. I'm sorry, the 10th. Whoops. <laughs> Old habits. So They will be considered, they will be considered, yeah. They'll be considered one of the first donors. Yeah, yeah. The tracking for everything only starts when Radu starts to load those gifts. Yeah. And it happens, you wake up all night, one night, and then you're gonna start loading them. It's my experience, they start four, five in the morning. They start like three, four in the morning, yeah. and, then, and then they're all pretty much processed. Last year, we had $287,000 that came through in scheduled gifts. Uh, actually, I don't know. Yeah, that's a really good question for them given our first time or competition. Yeah. We should push them to find out when they stop looking. Yeah. Um, I don't think any of the schedules gifts came in that late, Marcus. Because they told me, they told me, they told me how much the schedules gifts were at midnight the night before. And all that money showed up before 7 a.m. But that's a good question. We but uh, we'll ask for sure. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions about that? Scheduling gifts? Okay. Please don't order mugs, uh, you know, frisbees. Um, and, like this happened last year. People yeah. ordered all kinds of swag with the Valley Gift Day URL on the QR code, and it, they couldn't use it. You know, that was a bummer. Until right. the day that the scheduling opened. Don't use your link to your page on any promotion until December 1st. Because they will go there, they will not read your email, they will just go there and they will make a donation. Which is great, but it's not going to count towards Valley Gives numbers, your donor, you know, any of that. Yeah. Does that? Yeah. No, that's not true, but, but, you know, Michael will tell you that the frenzy that happens the week before and the week of, you want that to happen. So if you start asking people to donate, you know, just tell them to save the date, be ready. You know, this is great stuff that we're doing. Here's our story. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do before the schedule date. And then on the schedule date, go, give here. Give now. Give all the way to the 10th. Michael, you have anything you want to say on that? So just, we always purposely keep it very concentrated because we keep them our heart. The marketing campaign that we do to help promote awareness, and that's TV advertising, print advertising, billboards, banners, wherever we can stick a banner. Buses. Buses, Very bus good. boards this year. We've added, added new radio stations. Um, like that is all very concentrated between Thanksgiving and the town. Because that's, this is also, we are also trying to buy advertising at the absolute worst time of year to buy and so we're really lucky with the local. Sometimes we flip it over their shoulder at me. I'm sorry. It's um, the next stretch portion of the day. Sorry. <laughs> the yoga stretch of yeah. your shoulder. Um, so, that, so we purposely keep it very concentrated because we just don't, we, it, it, it's proven to be very successful that we just don't want people to get to December 10th and be like, oh, haven't they done that already? Yeah. Like we try to keep it really fresh and really short. And so that's, that's the key goal there. And also keep in mind that we did get feedback last year that the, all the emails dropping on the schedule of gift date open, just keep in mind that your donors are also on many of them on this list. And since there's no real advantage to having them start on December 1st versus the 6th or the 7th, you can decide when to stagger that first blast of emails out just to not be a part of the crush on December 1. What's the thought? Mm -hmm. From the donor's perspective, because we did hear that from a lot of donors, like, mm -hmm. wow, my inbox filled up with 
350 emails on whatever the date was last year that we told you in the toolkit. So to just be conscious of that, that you know, it really doesn't start till the 10th, so you can take your time. Right. Okay, so another element is the nonprofit outreach. And yeah. Well, I just have a question about the advanced information. Yeah. Um, so can any of those advanced donations or advanced like scholarships like, would be eligible for any of the crowdfunding? No. How how uh, the giving platforms work is is the the, basically, there's a program. It's called Valley Gives. You already have your Razoo page. Some of you have had a Razoo page for three, year, three years. That page doesn't talk to Valley Gives every day. It only talks to Valley Gives starting December 1st. So they switch what they call their preferred search engine. So anything searched inside of these nonprofits automatically gets shifted to the Valley Gives Day program. So, yeah. Oh, I see. So the prizes. They're not for those prizes. Right. So um, prizes. Anybody who schedules a gift is eligible. They're they're certain. Yeah, they're eligible. They're in the pool for the golden tickets. They're in the pool for the first donors, new donors. Yep, they are. Yeah, yeah, they are. Got it. <laughs> okay. So nonprofit outreach. So. Uh, Nonprofit outreach is me reaching out to you, but it's also you reaching out to other nonprofits and your community. So you guys are driving the bus. We didn't raise $2 million last year. We raised $225,000 to give away. Sorry, 250. We raised two. Sorry, those numbers. Yeah, we raised 250 of that to give away as prizes, but you guys raised the, the rest. So you guys are the outreach. The more nonprofits that come to the table, the better you're going to do. Don't worry about the competition. Everybody's going to get something close to something. You're going to get a donation from a donor. That's something, you know. So think about that, okay? 20,000 donors. All right, capacity building, my favorite part. <clears throat> so before you go into additional training sessions, ask yourself this right here, we're going to have you talk to your neighbors at the end of this. I want you to look at these questions, okay? And I want you to, you know, those who are new participants, really suck up whatever you can from your neighbor who's done this for two years. But basically, what is your strategy? What's your strategy this year? Have you thought about it? What'd you bring to the table today? You know, what's your strategy for engaging your community? Do you have, did you have one that worked last year? Or do you have one that didn't work last year? And you want to share that too, because you don't want to repeat yourself and you don't want anybody else to. Do you have a story? You know. The storytelling workshop that we're having can help you a lot with this. An amazing way to get your word out there is to have a compelling story. And I know you all have at least one from your organization that is dying to come out. And <laughs> so what kind, of, uh, what kind of communication are you using? Are you using traditional communication or are you using social media? So if you're a letter writer and you like writing the cards to your donors, that's not a bad thing very intimate way of doing it, but is it getting you the results you want? And if it isn't, maybe you need to shift it up a little and you, maybe you need to go to the social media training and figure out how you can tell your story in an email, how you can tell it in a newsletter, how can you tell it, you know, that type of thing. Are you following up to show the impact of your gifts? After Valley Gives Day, did you go, thank you for the gift, or did you go, oh, that was nice of her. <sighs> I mean, really, the only way to retain your donors is to reach out to them, tell them what you're doing. They gave to you because they want to know what you're doing. They want to know what you're doing with their money. <laughs> they want to know what great work you've done in the community. They gave to you because they think you're worth it, and you need to communicate with them that they're worth it. You don't need to. It would serve you to communicate with them that you appreciate their gift, you appreciate that they want to know about you. So that stewardship workshop that we're having in November will teach you a lot about the day after, December 11th, and what you do. These are our trainers. They're up on the website. Oh, sorry, go ahead. That's a great, 
That's a great question. Absolutely. So great question. I'll repeat it. So the question is, what about thanking them day of? Absolutely. We have people that thank on the spot. You know, I said this earlier. Look at your donation thing. Look at the people that have donated on that day. If you know them, go, God, it's so great you donated to my organization. You're the best, blah, blah, blah. Absolutely. So. I guess what I'm, I guess, I guess stewardship looks like this. So you get a new donor. Last year on Valley Gives Day, on average, 20% of the donors that came to, on average, let me say this right. On average, the nonprofits reported that 20% of the donors that came to the website on the day were new donors to them. That's average, 20%. So if you had 100 donors, 80 of them were old donors and 20 were new. And I mean, that's a huge number. So it's talking about retaining those new people. There's people that are getting invigorated and there's people who came to you that day. How do you do that? Do you have a plan for that? The stewardship uh, webinar that we're doing, we'll talk more about that. How do you do that? You know, do you do it through electronic communication? Do you have events? Do you have that type of thing? Does that make sense? Okay, all right. So anyways, the other two are social media webinar. Heather Mansfield did this one last year. She's doing it again for us. She had a lot of success. We had incredible feedback that she did an amazing job. I highly encourage you to come. She's got some new things to tell you about some of the major uh, networks that were your social networks that we use. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram. So, you know, if you don't know anything about it, you're going to want to know. And then uh, stewardship, what I just talked about. So they're all, these people were pulled, they were taken from a pool of really well-known fundraisers. Matter of fact, one of them said to me, oh my gosh, you got the rock stars. <laughs> you got the rock stars of development. So this, these are great resources. Uh, the only one that's live is, sorry, the only one that's live is the storytelling, which is at the Kittredge Center. Uh, uh, for business and workforce development at the community or uh, Holyoke Community College. So I encourage you to come to that personally. I'll be there. So will Dave from Northampton Community Television. So again, do you want to use traditional media? You know, you want to ask yourself these questions. What are your key messages? Like these questions, all of this, by the way, is recorded. You will get a copy if you ask me for a copy. Uh, we will send a link to all of our participants, okay? And social media. Do you have a web page, a Facebook page, a Twitter page, Pinterest, and Instagram account? I don't have all of those, but I do have a lot of them. And I encourage you to at least have a Facebook page and a Twitter page, okay? We have statistics on the growth um, of our social media over the last three years, and it's pretty darn amazing. In the end, this is what we want to do, guys. Um, we're going to take some time after I go through this to talk about what you guys shared, OK? Um, so in the end, what are we trying to accomplish here? We want to increase giving to local needs. Um, we want to get those organizations out there. You know, I had an organization that approached me the other day. They're a large organization. They're not a small organization. They said, we, we don't know how to fundraise because we get all of our money from governmental grants. And we have no donor database, and we're hurting because of it. This is not a tiny organization. It's a large organization, which you know, is really, really quite, quite interesting. You know, Somebody, you know, they have some grant writers, but they don't really need to write the grants because the governmental organizations get money from the government without trying, but they want to reach out to the community and they've never had to do that. Uh, and it happens to be a housing community, like a community for housing advocacy. So they are reaching out now and they're coming to Valley Gives because they want to learn how to be out there in social media, how they want to be out there, you know, looking for new donors who get interested, who could possibly become volunteers, you know, that type of thing. So. Really, getting out in your community is one of the biggest parts, and giving locally is one of the biggest parts of this program. Reduce fundraising costs. I was just mentioning this to someone 
Raising $1 online costs seven cents as compared to 20 cents for grant writing and up to a deficit, basically, writing a letter. Smaller organizations have a harder time with this. Larger organizations can pump out mailings, no problem, get in the money they need. But smaller volunteer organizations sometimes lose money on sending mailings. Not, not always, very rarely, but they, they can. <laughs> uh, leverage new giving technology. So, you know, this might drive you guys to starting, you know, your own website that has a donation page that, you know, it, it, it could drive you to a whole new level of technology. You know, our goal is to bring you into the 21st century to ride with us on this incredible wave we have of communication. So, uh, MPOs that use social networking have increased their fundraising by 40%. So that's a great statistic, don't forget it. Enhance the culture of generosity. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about you, but uh, every time I talk about Valley Gives, I get a little weepy because I'm very, very, very passionate about it. I really love the difference we're making with you as organizations. I have people telling me all the time, oh my God, I learned so much last year. Can't wait for the next year. And um, that's a really, really, Great feeling. I promised I wouldn't do that. Because <laughs> I'm crying. Yeah. So anyway, so I, you know, I can't encourage you enough to like really embrace this program. Don't spend your lives on it. You know, spend a couple hours here, a couple hours there. Don't make it your life. But definitely be consistent about it. Definitely take on the tools. You will get so much out of it. I promise you. 120 percent. I promise you. So, we have any questions? Anything burning? Yes, back in the way, way, way corner. Uh, there are those of us who are still working with folks who have died. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the hourly processes, in terms of you know, trying to get, encourage them to say, okay, we're going to push everybody to go at 10 o'clock on, on Valley Gift Day to try to you know, make a big splash on that. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, I can repeat it. Um, so the question is um, really motivating people to be in the 21st century is what I'm hearing. How do you, how do you, well, the there are people who are, who are not capable of being on social media, not able to get their computer to work the way they want it to work, so on and so forth. I'm going to say this. We have five, five colleges. We have three, four, five community colleges. There are students in those colleges who think... I understand. The technology is not I got it. What town are you from? Well, I'm from Greenfield, but we have folks yeah. in the Hill Ah. So, so we have yeah, those three teams. I just I want to because I know this is an issue that's come up in the past, and I just don't know if anyone ha else has taken advantage of those. But we are going to be because it's a 24-hour event within reason. Our team gets up really early. We feed Tracy a lot of coffee, <laughs> and me, and we show up actually throughout all three counties, and we have giving stations. So to a couple of things I would say, and please in your sharing, I hope you did share, the people um, at various nonprofits, part of their strategy is to host a live event someplace on the give day. So that could be a local library where they have wireless. It could be um, at another nonprofit that you strike up a partnership with, where you invite donors to come and be a part of the action in person. You'll have wireless access there for them. They can make a donation. We know for a fact that at um, other locations, large gifts are made just by having that person show up and use a common computer to make the gift. Someone should be there from your volunteer team or your staff to make sure that they log out of Resu after they make their gift so that no one else hops on by accident and keeps donating under that email. But if you do that with the street teams, 
it's A, a way to build community. And that's really one of the main goals of Valley Giz is to get people together, celebrate your work. So putting them in person with you is a great way to show them and educate them about your mission, have a little fun, have some uh, you know, uh, green donuts that day or whatever for <laughs> Valley Giz, um, but get them in person with you. We will be there probably at the Big Y again in Greenfield. Did anyone visit us there? That's actually, I was there when we hit a million dollars in the Big Y with a sweet older woman who was making her first ever gift um, on a computer and it was done on an iPad in the aisle of uh, where the cafe is. So this is awesome. <laughs> so that's the and answer to your question. That's yell. perfect. So, you know, send people to Big Y to visit us, um, create your own event. GCC is, um, I'm sure, would be willing to, you know, we have a Greenfield office, the Community Foundation downtown in the downtown GCC campus. They've got great wireless. We'll probably be set up there at some point throughout the day. So, you know, for those who are just internetless um, in the hills, bring them into town if they can make it, and let's hope there's no big snowstorm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Don't even throw that out there. Sorry, I didn't understand what you were saying. But, <clears throat> but to that, hang on. But to that point, uh, also people that have technical challenges that that have not are not very fast on computers. Really, find a young person in your community that wants to donate some time to you because it will make a huge difference. It will. They just do everything. So we'll be in all three counties. We'll let you know where we're going to be. Usually we post that on the blog about a week or so before. Yep, yep. Um, we'll have a party. You guys wanted a party last year. I think that was one of the things. So we're figuring out where that will be. If anyone has any great connections for huge, awesome, centrally located venues that will donate most of the food. <laughs> <laughs> and space. Know. We're yeah. trying to save all of our money for prizes, right. you know, yeah. so. So this is the kind of stuff the team's working on for you, but there'll be plenty of chance to pull people together and celebrate together, take advantage of what we're doing out on the streets on that day. Yeah, Marcus. Um, just to the, the internet question, we had uh, one very uh, loyal supporter of the house party, um, who was one of the lone people that she was very <laughs> um, and so we actually, we knew that about her and asked her if she'd be willing to, to host a house party and then just kind of had a bunch of them at her house. And I don't know, maybe five or ten friends showed up, but it, I, I think the potential is there for that to be a right. thing. Right. So, absolutely, Marcus. So having an event the day of is can be really powerful. Um, last year, uh, there was an organization that had a concert that day, and they said, pull out your iPhones. You know, let's start giving. And they had a couple of computers in the lobby. So those kinds of things work really great. It's a Wednesday, so you know, you might not be as great as like a Friday or Saturday event, but you can do it and it can be pulled off. So any more questions? Yes. So I know there's no prizes for money, but hmm. will there still be leaderboards? <laughs> yes. Um, I mean basically the leaderboards are gonna look like they did last year donors, dollars, donors, dollars, donors, dollars, just the donors are what we're calculating. Yeah. So you still see the where, oodles. Where you appear in the leaderboard will be driven by, by your donor, donors as opposed to your, your yeah. dollar total. Yeah. That's another thing is that people who might not have shown up on the top of the leaderboard might pop up there this year depending on their efforts. Right. Yep. Yes. Yes, ma'am. so funny. I, I only answer this question when it's asked. <laughs> I don't put this out here voluntarily. Wow. All of our trainings are going to be taped. But we really encourage people to show up the day of. There's a different feeling. There's a different sense of urgency. There's a different, like, it's just a different vibe. So yes, this is being taped because guess what? There's some people that didn't and aren't going to be coming to these trainings. So they're going to get this. It might not seem fair, but you lose a lot by not being in a group that's working for the same thing. We should all be able to look under our seats and find our prize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that comes on December 10th, your prize. <laughs> yeah, but, but anyway, so, so yeah, uh, they're all going to be videotaped. And if, you, and if you, we know if you've attended the webinars or haven't attended the webinars, and we'll be sending you an email saying, hey, if you want to check this out, this is where it is. Yeah, sure. Hypothetical situation, but your computer goes, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you phone it in? Uh, some of them are phone, I think all but one you can phone. Maybe all of them you can phone in, but regardless, all of them are recorded. 
so we'll make sure you get them. And do test your computers beforehand, whether it can adjust to the system that you have. The two, there are three webinars, and two of them are using uh, the, oh gosh, go to meeting. Go to meeting. Sorry. Go to webinar. I've, there's been yeah. other webinars that I've wanted to attend, but because I didn't have such and such downloaded right. on my computer, yeah. that I yeah. like, If it's go to meeting, you have to download something. Yeah. So, yeah. so just do it in ahead of time. Just read the emails that the, that the organiz, the people that are putting on the webinars will send you a confirmation email. It'll tell you, check your system. Does it have this software? Do you, can you, does it have this much memory? That type of thing. If you really can't find a computer that has the basic level requirements to run the webinar, just email us and let us know. We do have, um, Paragus IT is a sponsor. If there's something particular they might be able to help you with, we have, um, you can come down to the office and do it with us. We'll figure it out. So if you really get in a pinch with your own technological capacity, let us know. Yeah, you had a question. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. Well, here's the thing. So, um, I don't know the answer officially. Tracy. Here's my my That's opinion. I mean. Here's my opinion. No, <laughs> no uh, uh, we really encourage. I mean, it's okay to share the wealth. I, we don't want to hold anybody back from expanding their horizons. Uh, but uh, we provide this, you know, for free to the nonprofits who participate because they're showing the energy to be in our program with us and to learn. All of it, not just a little piece that they and want to learn. Asking, are you asking whether multiple people can you forward the email? Can right. you do it? That's yeah. the question. Okay. They're going to have to list the nonprofit when they register. Yeah. They're going to have to have the name of the organization. Oh, for the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can use your organization's name if they want to sign in. I'm not going to. Yeah, I just yeah. Know if it was limited to the email address. No, no. Actually, in the case of here, we have a couple of organizations that have two or three representatives here. So, you know, what we say is, you know, bring three, you know, don't, don't, don't bring five or ten, but bring three, and that's fine, too. Yeah. So, to attend the webinar, if you have your vice president and, and that vice president is in New York City, mm -hmm. they can still walk on and attend, Yep. Correct? Okay. Yep. Just like a, another yep. board member out in New yep. York State. Yep. Okay, yep. Very good. Okay. Absolutely. Anybody else? Yeah. I have one more annoying. That's okay. Um, I love yeah, Franklin County. We were talking with you guys about last year at the end was it just it's a different animal a little bit in the hill towns and in the country where yep. we don't have stuff going on. So I wanted to know specifically because you guys talked about buses and billboards and stuff. Yeah. Is there some going to be something like are you guys going to be able to get stuff on some Franklin County buses? It's just hard. To yeah. It's the we're only. Gonna be, we're actually only we're going to be on the FRTA buses. No way. Yeah. 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 You're the only buses. You're, You're the, the only buses. buses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Poor little Franklin County is going to have bus banners. We brought you some buses to say. We actually listened to you, you see? We did. We're, 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 that's where we're doing the buses because we realized that we, we looked at our media, we look at our media buying, pat we really looked at the media buying patterns. We really talked to our sponsor, our media sponsors, and we looked at audience saturation, and we definitely had a gap in Franklin County. So um, we're trying to we're trying to correct for that this year with a different kind of spin. Wow. So the 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 uh, Greenfield Recorder is a sponsor under the like the Daily Hampshire Gazette and the Advocate and the Greenfield Recorder are all owned by the same. So um, we're going to do a couple different things with the Recorder yeah. than we're going to do with some other newspapers. Whereas like in Hamden County we have the digital billboard, right. you know, at the big curve. And so so where we where we've got. You know, we're trying to spread it out a little bit, and so that's why you guys got the bus boards up. Like right, but I do want to say, you know, when we were talking about the matches earlier, yeah. Franklin County had the best successes with matches, and I think yeah. that's also an answer to your question, how do you get your donors, if they don't have technology, have someone create a match, and then have everybody come and give in one location to that match, and boom, you got $5,000, or boom, you've got $20,000 just from creating that space. So I think that's a really good solution for technology challenged areas. So, um, yes? What newspapers in Camden County would you be advertising? Like, are you going after the... We're in the reminder. 
we're, yeah, we're in the reminder. Um, our media sponsors this year are uh, uh, Mass Live and the Republican, the reminder, the Westfield Papers, which is in Westfield in the Long Meadow paper, um, the River, WHMP, and what's the other one? Hits 90 Hits. whatever? 94.7. Hey, Hadley. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that's, I, not that I listen to it. Um, uh, WMAS. Um, Northampton Community Television. Daily Hampshire Gazette, Valley <laughs> Advocate, Greenfield Recorder, Lamar Outdoor are all of our media sponsors. So that's. And he did an awesome job. We're getting at least two for one trade for everything we bought, so you'll get a, a lot more coverage even than past years. Yeah, oh, Laser, Rock 102. Yeah. All right, any more, any more questions? Because we are at 432, 4, 3, 433. All right, thank you guys.